Hi and welcome to this tutorial. If you watched the previous tutorial, you know there is four ways to try Ubuntu. You could use the LiCE, you could install Ubuntu inside Windows, you could install Ubuntu side by side with Windows, and you could use a whole hard drive to try Ubuntu. Today we should try the version when you install Ubuntu inside Windows. This is a special version of Ubuntu called Vubi and we start by downloading it. There we have downloaded it. Right, the next step will be check for virus. the downloaded file and we simply scan it. No virus found, good. download file have a blocking on it but now when we have checked for virus we should simply remove the block I normally write protected the file too after we have checked for virus we should try to get as much performance out of the computer so we start by simply check the hard drive we use the tool scan disk for this. No error on the hard drives, good. And now to the, the performance part. To get the most out of the hard drives, you need to simply pack the data as close together as possible. And this is the prompt which do it. If you not have used disk fragmentation before, it's probably high time to use it. Depending on when you last time run it, this could take shorter or longer time to do it. So here we do a time skip. Okay, we have the flag of the hard drive. Before I continue, I will show you a web page about Ruby. Ruby Guide. Here you can read more about Ruby and what it do and which operation system is supported and so on. Alright, the funny part, installation. Should look up the file. For some interesting reason, when I run Ruby inside a virtual machine like this, it's identify the processor wrong. So I will now force Ruby to run on an Intel version by adding this. The installation windows is quite simple. Here you choose which hard drive. We only have one, so not much to choose. The size and I will leave it on this size. There is a couple of uh, desktop environment and simply leave it as Ubuntu and that will work perfectly well. You could install other if you want. We should however change to English. And there we have. And write in some interesting password. After this, we're ready to install. The 
first first thing that will happen is download right version. In this case, Intel version. We should simply wait for download. We'll be doing a time skip here. And after downloading, we have extracting. This will also take some time, so we do another time skip here. Alright, this part of the installation is finished. We use this manual reboot. I have a bad experience on letting software re reboot the Windows system. Before reboot, we have a little more theory. A couple of things have happened now. The boot sector on the hard drive have been changed so we could boot either Ubuntu or Windows. And we have a new folder, Ubuntu, and inside here we have two files, swap on disk and root on disk. In this file the, we have the swap partition. Linux uses swap partition instead of swap files, like Windows. It is only another way to store data which are not room for in the memory. Here is an important file, root on disk. This is the disk which have the root system of the Ubuntu system. If you save data to the hard drive in Ubuntu, the data will be stored inside this file. That means if Ubuntu or Ruby start working improperly, the data could be lost because you could not read the data out of this file without special software. To avoid data losses, we should set up a backup solution, so you could simply uninstall Ubuntu and install it again and access the backup copy and read out the data. And this should have a more appropriate name. So, now we have a backup or rather prepare for backup. And now we are ready to reboot. Alright, let reboot. system is now rebooting and we have now a boot menu as you see here. If you do nothing the system will automatically boot Windows XP. But we should continue with Ubuntu. And you make the choice by arrow keys on your keyboard and after that press enter. Now the system preparing for running Ubuntu for the first time. This part could take some time, so we do a time skip here. Time to log in for the first time. system ready to be used. If you have choose another language than English, the installation will be finished off by installing the language. But we should prepare to set up a backup solution. Time to choose the backup. But first we should have something to backup. A file.
just double check so we have a file in our home folder. to fix the backup solution. And we use the settings here and here we have the backup. simple password. It simply work better if you have a password for backup. And say it should remember the password. And of course you should remember it too or simply write it down. You could leave it without the password but uh, it simply run better if you have it. And now we have fix the backup and tomorrow the backup will be run automatically again. Now is the system ready to be used? I have already shown a couple of things you could do with Ubuntu in the previous tutorials. I skipped that part and simply go to the part of removing Ubuntu if you not want to use it any longer. And simply boot up Windows again. Now we are back in Windows, but before we start removing things, we should talk about a couple of things. Ruby have some drawback and some advantages. The drawback is obvious. You run from a virtual hard drive. That means that if Ruby crash. The hard drive could be damaged and the Ruby or Ubuntu will not be accessible and the hard drive contents will be locked inside the files which are the virtual hard drive. That are why we have set up a backup solution to solve that problem. The good thing is that it is very easy to remove Ubuntu when we use Ruby and that are what we should show now simply go in to the control panel, look up where you're adding and remove programs and here you will find Ubuntu and removing Ubuntu is very simple. Simply right click remove and we should give it a couple of seconds to start and now uninstall. Ubuntu has been removed and the boot sector has been rewritten to the old contents. The only trace we have left is this folder with backup file. But 
but I plan to show how to restore the backup, so I will not remove this folder yet. To the last thing, how to recover from backup. I have now reinstalled Ruby, so here we have a working version of Ubuntu again. I prefer to download backups to a specific new folder. So simply let us create it. First time you start the backup the program, you have this starting windows. And here you choose backup or restore from backup. it to start. Now we choose where to take the backup from. And we choose local folder. And we should look up folder to contain the backup. There we have it. Now we could choose which backup we should pick. We only have one, so we must take that. And now we choose where to re reinstall it. I look up the specific new folder here. I hope you remember the password now. If not, you are in problem. Or rather, you have problem. This was a small backup, so that was quick and easy. Here we have the file we want to get access to. That was everything I want to show you. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.